Hello, I'm Jonas Rewinski, and you're watching Break the Fake. They make them, we break them, and tell you all you need to know. Let's kick off this episode with how the military top brass is looking at Russia's latest adventurism. Now, according to General Wiesław Kukuła, chief of the general staff of the Polish armed forces, Russia is gearing up for what he describes as a showdown with NATO, fully aware that the alliance is a defensive structure. He added that Moscow is pursuing an unequivocally aggressive policy. We know that the threat is real, and we need to apply deterrence to make sure it never comes to pass. But what of the Russian point of view? Well, the official Kremlin propaganda is now circulating the narrative that they are capable of striking the West anytime, anywhere. Contrary to appearances, this is not the plot of The 100 or the sequel to Mission Impossible. Instead, it's the brave Russian nation which, as always, cheerfully pretends to be choosing its leader as in, you know, real choice, as opposed to voting in the presence of armed troops or stern-faced police officers, while also eagerly preparing for world domination. <laughs> Okay, so we said it's not Mission Impossible, but we were just teasing you. In fact, this particular video that was circulating on Russian state TV is part Battlestar Galactica, part Terminator, and part Knowing. It was a film with Nicolas Cage. So we're supposed to believe that the apocalypse brought upon us by Russia would be like a Nicolas Cage movie. All right. Anyway, let's circle back to the words of the Polish chief of staff. Russia's readiness for aggressive action is influenced by three factors. The first one is ideology. It is openly manifested and leaves us with no illusions about its real intentions, said the general. Now, the second, as the general pointed out, is the strength factor, defined as the potential of the Russian armed forces. And time for a quote. Despite significant losses in Ukraine and tying up a considerable portion of its forces there, Russia is restructuring its military and vigorously boosting its defense industry, basically switching it to war mode. They are clearly stockpiling resources for a long-lasting, high-intensity conflict, the general emphasized. Of course, the quality of those stockpiles is open to debate, as is the issue of how much money goes to actual arms production and how much is pilfered by corrupt officials in need of brand new luxury SUVs or exclusive Swiss timepieces. Now, if that ain't a recipe for a blockbuster movie plot, I don't know what is. It's like watching a bumbling villain in an action flick, except this one has got nuclear weapons instead of a cat to stroke menacingly. Now, the former editor of the Russian propaganda channel Sputnik Litova, Marat Kasem, has admitted that the goal of the editorial office was to destabilize the situation in Lithuania. Kasem is a Latvian citizen who lived and worked for several years in Moscow in the media group known as Rusia Sivodnia, which also owns Sputnik Lithuania. Now, Kasem claims that he worked for Sputnik Lithuania for money rather than ideological reasons. He was paid a salary of several thousand euros, provided with accommodation and a car. 
Funny enough that Kasim has decided not to return to Russia. Color me surprised. Kasim has also disclosed his past role as a host of a talk show with Maria Zakharova, the spokeswoman for the Russian Foreign Ministry. He claimed that even the jokes on the show were scripted to prompt witty responses from Zakharova. Furthermore, Sputnik's coverage was allegedly influenced by Latvian MEP Tatiana Zdanoka, who, as revealed by a recent investigation, has been collaborating with, guess what, Russian intelligence services, and she's been doing that for decades. According to Kesem, guidelines for propaganda work come directly from the administration of the president of the Russian Federation, in particular from the first deputy head of the administration, Alexei Gromov. So, is anyone shocked? That's why our program is here. That's why we are showing you the work of Russian propaganda around the globe. Russia never sleeps, and its propaganda is working overtime, especially recently. The elections in the United States cannot be called democratic, unlike the elections in Russia. This was a quote, by the way. And no, I'm not joking. This is what the new president of Russia has said. Oh, wait, is it a new president? I'm sure we've seen this guy somewhere. Вот э, такова жизнь. Если вы хотите узнать мое мнение по поводу, демократичны ли у нас выборы или нет, я считаю, что демократичны. И наоборот, в некоторых странах, ну, например, в вашей стране, разве можно считать демократичным использование административного ресурса для того, чтобы нападать на одного из, э, из кандидатов в, э, в президенты Соединенных Штатов? So yes, elections in Russia are more democratic than in America because, you know, in America, if the incumbent has any rivals with a prospect for perhaps threatening him, then these rivals begin to disappear. I mean, they're thrown out of windows, poisoned with Novichok, or imprisoned and later die while incarcerated. Yeah, that's America in 2024, according to Vladimir Putin, accordingly. Surely we must be watching different sources of information there. You know, speaking of elections in Russia and speaking of uh, sources of information of dubious quality, American pro-Kremlin propagandist Tucker Carlson, who was presented in the Russian Federation as a real superstar after his scandalous interview with Russian dictator Vladimir Putin, was spotted in the Russian city of Tumen. But, to be honest, this time we're not talking about a live propagandist, but about a cardboard copy of him which the organizers of the so-called presidential elections used to invite more local residents to voting centers. I wonder what happened in the life of Tucker Carlson that guided his decision to become a star in the Russian society, of all things. I mean, this is not something to be proud of. Being a star to people who are supporting a war against a sovereign country, not really a good thing, definitely not. Well, at least he's got cardboard effigies of himself being made. Back in the day, you'd have to be, I don't know, a Marvel superhero or Darth Vader to score this particular achievement. Waiting for more merch to hit the market. Imagine a Tucker Carlson action figure driving a shopping trolley through a posh supermarket in downtown Moscow and picking up produce and marveling at the prices, saying, oh, they've got eggs, Russia is a great country. I sense a business opportunity there, I'm telling you. And with this, we end this episode of Break the Fake. Please stay with us here on TVP World for more latest news and comments. I'm Janusz Bye for now.